Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. Previously, we saw that Chu awakened a mysterious power that allows him to earn points from people's negative emotions. With these points, he is able to purchase fruits that greatly increase his training efficiency. After finding out his neighbor is actually someone very powerful, he begins to train with him. Shu eventually manages to buy him and his sister their house, but can't celebrate yet as all the members of the Awakened class are called to gather for an emergency. The story continues as we see Jiang explain that a ruin is about to open up, and that they are being taken there. He has heard that whenever ruins appear, they attract several masters who fight over them since they contain treasures such as medicines, blessed items, and weapons. The most valuable of which is something called the Formation Eye. If someone manages to get it, the whole ruin disappears. Their Yuan class is headed there so that they can train and take advantage of the abundance of power that flows from the area surrounding the ruins. However, they will not be able to enter the ruins since the students are not high enough of a level to survive. Shu can see that Li is eavesdropping on their conversation and uses that opportunity to earn some points. At the camp, Mr. Fei explains that the entire operation is confidential, even their training, and that anyone that speaks out about it will be court-martialed. Later that night, Li attempts to make fun of Shu for being poor and only being able to have a meal since it was provided for free, just to be ignored. As they eat, an extremely rude student demands preferential treatment by getting a chair, but after insulting Shu gets taught a lesson. Shu and Jiang then discuss the benefits of training there, but Jiang reveals that while the spiritual power around the edges is high, it is even greater inside the ruins. They then lament how they won't be allowed inside. Later, Shu doesn't want to train around others, considering he is the only one that must sing the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to do so. However, he realizes that he has a much better way of leveling up anyway. Shu goes to find the easily bothered Li and torments him relentlessly as he attempts to focus on practicing, yielding Shu several points. The next morning, he checks his inventory to see that he was able to earn 9 pieces of his leveling fruit in one night. Cell phone signals are being blocked and so he is not able to contact the disappointed Le Shao. Shu would later find that his handling of the rude person the day before has earned him some added respect when he receives an extra piece of chicken and a seat which he declines anyway. That night, Shu continues his own form of training by distracting Li with some childhood stories like the first time he tried a watermelon and that time he found an ant the size of his thumb. Just when Li thinks he has found a peaceful place to practice, Shu appears to admire the night sky and the closed ruin in the distance. The next day, Shu uses his leveling fruit and explains that he has gotten to the midpoint of being a level D. At lunch, Li reveals that he has managed to level up and would like to fight Shu, but Mr. Fei stops them. He explains that comrades need to remain on good terms and that an arm wrestling match should be enough to settle it. Lee prepares for the match of his life with an intense expression, but is quickly defeated. Mr. Fei is curious and wants to give it a shot only to be defeated as well. He acknowledges his talent and Chu explains that arm wrestling Lee seems to be the key to leveling up quickly. Afterwards, Chu notices a mist forming and Jian explains that it must be the portal into the ruins. Furthermore, whoever enters will be trapped in there for however long it takes for someone to find the formation eye. Just then, alarms sound and the students are told to retreat from the base of the mountain, as the mist has begun to descend, approaching rapidly. After being separated from Jiang, Shu lands in the mysterious ruins and is attacked immediately. He handles the undead creature pretty easily, managing to knock it down, but realizes that isn't enough and finally finishes it off. As he wonders where everyone else has gone, more undead begin to emerge from the ground, but he finds that he can just outrun them. Shu would then encounter a group as they run from some zombies, and he defends them. As he struggles with one of the monsters, the group begin to wonder if they should help, but ultimately decide to wait and see, planning to take the axe if he is killed, since they believe that is the source of his strength. Shu finishes it off, and the group explain that they plan to stay there since the zombies are gone, and wait for the ruin to disappear. A girl asks that he stay to protect them, but Shu ignores the request, and tells them to watch for movements in the ground since the monsters could reappear at any moment. He recommends they try to outrun them, but if they can't, then they must destroy its head. He leaves them the axe and leaves. The group is then left to wonder if he would have stayed had they helped him in the fight. Days later, we watch Ashu defeat some more monsters and reveals that things get more dangerous at night. He plans to make his way up the mountain to get a better view when he runs into the body of the network member who had been nice to him in the past. Afterwards, he spots a flying object that he thinks may be from a magical weapon. He knocks it back to its origin to find that it was actually just a flare. 
Instead of there being a name of the person he receives points from, there are only numbers, like an ID code. Shu approaches the person and we get a glimpse into the past to see that he was trained by a secret organization from a young age to live in the shadows as a spy in other countries. Him and a group of others were given flares so that they could find one another after being split up. Shu notices that he is dressed like a Yuan student, but he knows them all and is certain this guy isn't one of them. The guy is giving Shu a bunch of points by just standing there though, and Shu wonders if he can get him 10,000 by the end of the night. The guy then introduces himself as Chang, and Shu lies introducing himself as his classmate Li. Chang would like to see his sword, but Shu just uses it as another opportunity to get some more points. Chang decides to leave in search of his classmates and recommends Shu look for his own, but is shocked to hear that Shu wants to help him first. Shu can't believe how similar Chang is to Li and refuses to let such a good source of points go. On their quest, Chang thinks to himself about how he had been watching Shu for a while and was killing some of Shu's classmates along the way. He thinks about how he knows Shu is only pretending to be weak and foolish to be trusting a stranger like him. They encounter a group of monsters and Chang requests Shu's sword to clear the way, but his plan is to really outrun him, leaving Shu to die. Shu however messes with him again and ends up leaving Chang behind instead. After Chang catches up, there is a bit of a tense moment, but it's broken up when Shu says they should rest. Chang says he won't sleep and Shu says he won't either, instead he will practice. However as he does, he begins to snore very loudly. Thinking he's asleep, Chang wants to use the opportunity to attack him, but Shu startles him, saying that he is done practicing. After not sleeping at all, Shu leaves to pee and returns with some stinky tofu. Chang is shocked and asks how that could be, but Shu only goes on to explain the silly and long-winded origins of its recipe. This proves to be the last straw as Chang finally makes his attempt at killing Shu. The battle is long and Chang's abilities as a trained spy are obvious, as he manages to eventually disarm Shu of his sword. However, the battle is ended by one devastating blow from Shu's dagger. Chang falls, realizing only now how strong Shu really is. Shu then trembles as he thinks about how things change so quickly and how cruel the world can be. He does not want to be a murderer but understands he must do what is needed to survive. He can only sigh as he wishes that he could be with Le Shao. Sometime later, Shu gathers a fruit that resembles an apple, only to see that squirrels there have gained intelligence and can generate negative emotions. He runs for a while and wonders how he has yet to see anyone else. He thinks about how big the ruins are and realizes that he had been going in a circle when he should actually be going to the center, since that is most likely where the formation eye is. Just then, he gets chased by a pack of wolves, and when he is taunted by the squirrels, he threatens to come back for all their fruit. The chase intensifies, but Shu reminds himself that he needs to return to La Shao and gets a burst of energy. He would then encounter a group that recognize him and are disappointed to hear that he has not brought help, but then realizing surviving alone must mean he is really strong. Shu realizes there are some from the group earlier and the girl explains that the others had killed each other, fighting over the axe since they believed it's the source of his power. She reveals that they have not had food or water for some time and beg that he stay to protect them. He declines and thinks how he is no hero, just someone trying to get home alive. They envy him as he eats and Chu tells them where they can get some of the fruit. They can get there in about two days if they walk fast and avoid getting torn to pieces by the wolves. He continues eating as the group decide they can overtake him. One of them threatens that he should give him some and Chu begins to tell him the long-winded origins of the stinky tofu recipe. He is disarmed and Chu asks the man if he would prefer to keep the axe or the sword. However, when he chooses the axe, Chu reveals that he will be keeping both. Shu then continues on his quest to find the Formation Eye, but we do get to see that he didn't leave them completely empty handed. Later, Shu gets attacked by a zombie with a spear and is surprised to see that it is capable of having emotions. More of them appear so he runs for cover and the first zombie sighs as he is now the only one without a spear. Shu then takes a moment to admire his new Spear of the Ruins that is able to have power injected into it. We then see as members of the network prepare for another difficult fight against 9 of the cavalry zombies and plan to pick each one off after taking the leader out first. They notice that one is different from the rest since it wields a sword and assume that he is the leader. 
One of the members wonders why the Heavenly Network member isn't helping them, and the other member says he was taking care of some level C spies who snuck into the ruins, but really they were all just running from danger. Their sniper lands a shot on their primary target but must run as it didn't create the confusion that they had hoped. They realize now that they must have been wrong and have now lost their advantage as the zombies are aware of them. As they fall into despair, they notice a Yuan student all alone and prepare to fight to protect the hopeless kid. However, they are in awe as they watch the young man pick off one of the zombies, taking its spear and escaping with ease. They determine that he was the one to take the other spears as well, but no one in the group knows who he is. Their leader explains that it would be impossible for him to have been a Yuan student since he had to be at least a level D to do what he did. However, one of the students that is with them reveals that the kid is actually the one that managed to level up from arm wrestling Lee. Elsewhere, Shu receives some points from Le Shao and wonders what she could be so upset about. He has a memory from their childhood when he expertly hid in a game of hide and seek. That is, until he was found by Le Shao, who explains that it doesn't matter how good he is at hiding, she will always find him. Afterwards, he predicts that once the ruins disappear, all his weapons will be confiscated by the network. He decides to sell them to others in the ruins for cash, but doubts anyone has cash since there are no ATMs in there. However, before that can happen, he realizes that he underestimated the zombies, as they have now snuck up on and surrounded him. That doesn't matter though, as he uses his exceptional skills with his new weapon to destroy them all. We then get a glimpse back home as Le Shao lets out her frustrations on a picture of the absent Shu. She runs out of chips calling Shu a bastard and gets a hidden stash with the words don't open on it. After making her way into it, she finds another note that says whoever eats the chips deserves to be punished and that she should wait for him, which she does. A glance over to her phone shows many texts that she has sent Shu, asking for him to return home already. Members of the network discuss how Shu somehow managed to disappear, and that scouts that are looking for survivors will report back if they find him. Food is becoming scarce, so the priority is to hurry and break out. They hope to find Shu so that he can join their group since he seems more experienced with the zombies. They arrive to find the remains of a battle and determine that whoever did it left without any harm at all. The students then all wonder if it was Shu, as all the weapons are gone, and that is his style. A scout arrives to inform them that the nine horsemen guarding the entrance to the core of the ruin have begun chasing someone. They decide on a plan to attack the cavalry so that they can enter the core. However, it requires that they split up and attack from two sides. Elsewhere, Shu takes a moment to find that the ruins are very effective for amplifying powers, since he has already earned enough to purchase another leveling fruit. After eating it, we see that a 4 star in a star system has been illuminated. The network members then discuss how the Yuan students are too weak and afraid to fight, so the cavalry captain must be targeted by them otherwise the students will be in danger. The moment is tense as they prepare their ambush, however Shu appears from the sky bidding farewell to the zombies that he calls ATMs. The network decide that they should help Shu and are amazed to see how many weapons he has collected. Their help comes too late though as by the time they arrive, Shu explains that he is done and they can all relax. The network member is stunned, but all Shu cares about is making it clear that all those weapons are his. Thanks for watching part 3. If this video gets 10,000 likes, I will know you want to continue the series and we'll make part 4. All the other parts in this series will be linked in a pinned comment below.